Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, merge two sorted lists. All right, so in this question, uh, we're going to be given two different linked lists. And both of these linked lists are going to be sorted. So what we want to do is we want to merge these two sorted linked lists into one. So the list should be made by splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. Okay, so one thing you do want to notice is that we are going to be given two different linked lists and the two linked lists can be the same, but not necessarily. Uh, they do not necessarily have to have the same length. So for example, in our example here, this one has a length of three and this also has a length of three. So that makes it so that works out, right? But they don't necessarily have to have the same length. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's look at a few examples. So uh, over here, we have two linked lists. The first one is one, two, and four. And the second one is one, three, and four. So by itself, the link, both of the linked lists individually are sorted, right? So one, two, four, one, three, four. But now we want to merge them into a bigger linked list containing of all these elements over here. And we want to see what that's going to look like. So over here, we first have one, then one, then two, three, four, and four. It's just sorted, right? So we're taking all the elements here and sorting them together. So it should be pretty simple to solve and let's just see how we can do it. So this is one condition. Um, both of them don't have anything, so we don't return anything. And another condition is one of them does have a value. So in this case, we have a value of zero and L1 is actually empty. So in that case, well, we merge them both. So we merge an empty linked list with a linked list which exists, right? So basically in this uh, this case, when you have L1 and L, so L1 does have a value, but L2 doesn't. Well, in that case, you just return one of them, right? Because that's the exact same thing. It's merging a non-existing list and a already sorted list. Okay, so now let's just look uh, take a look at our solution and it should be pretty simple. So let's say we have two linked lists and I'll be using the exact same two linked lists. So we have one points to two points to three and the other one was one points to four points to five and let's have this pointing to seven over here. Okay, so this is L1 and this is L2. Both of them are different linked lists and both of them are sorted as it is. So individually L1 and L2 are pre-sorted, but we, now we want to merge them. So to do this, we can use a really simple way to do it. And the way that we're going to do is, is uh, we know, so when we're uh, in our question, we're going to be given the head pointer values of this. So we're, go we're going to have this value over here. And we're also going to have this node over here. So not the value to be precise. Uh, we're only going to have the node. So we're going to have the head node for L1 and we're going to have the head node of L2. So using this, we can actually solve the question pretty easily. So we're going to start off by having something called a dummy node. Okay. So if you don't know what a dummy node is, uh, usually in this context, a dummy node, as the name suggests, acts as a dummy. It has no purpose, but its only purpose is to just hold, stay as a placeholder. Okay. And its uh, reason should be, and its purpose will be evident really soon. Okay. Uh, so let's just say we have a dummy node and this has no value. Uh, it has a value of none and it just exists as a placeholder. Okay. So this is, so to our dummy node, we're going to add the rest of the merged list. Okay. So it's kind of, it's going to uh, hold as a placeholder for our answer. So in the beginning, we're going to make a comparison between L1 and L2. And in this case, the comparison that we're going to make is if L1 is greater than L2, then in that case, what is going to be the next element? So pretty simply, let's say uh, we have L1 has a value of two and L2 has a value of four. So in this case, what is going to come out first? Well, the first thing that's going to come out is going to be the smaller number. So if L1 is greater than L2, then we are going to end up picking L2, whatever node is at L2. Else, we're going to end up choosing L1, okay? So let's see what this means. So in the beginning, we, like I said, we have our new linked list with this dummy uh, head node in the beginning. So now what we're going to, and actually just to point it out, we're also going to have sort of like a pointer over here as well. Okay, so the pointer is just going to start off at the head node over here. Okay, so in the beginning, we have to, we have a choice between one and one. So which one are we going to end up choosing? So in this case, if L1 is greater than L2, we choose L2. But in this case, they're the same. So what that, what we end up doing is we're now going to choose the value L1. So we're going to choose this node. Okay, so we're going to point our dummy to the value of this node over here. So in other words, let me, let's just do it. So dummy is going to be pointing to one. Now, since we're doing that, we're going to have two more changes that happen simultaneously. So now that we have a new value over here, what's going to happen is 
So we already accounted for this value, so we don't need to worry about it. So since we're already done accounting for it, we're going to move the pointer, which was originally over here, to the right by one. So we're going to move it to the next element. So now the pointer is going to be over here. And similarly, the pointer for our new linked list is now going to be over here. Okay, they just move to the right by one. Okay, perfect. So now we have two and one. So in this case, two is greater than one. So now we end up picking one. Okay, so we pick one. Now the pointer is going to end up moving to the next one since we already counted for this one. And the pointer for the dummy as well is going to move to the right. I'm just going to use the color white. Okay, so now same thing. I'll just go through it a little bit faster. So now we're comparing two and four. In this case, two is less than four. So that means we end up picking the two. So we pick up the, so we pick the two. So let's cross it out. It's going to be over here and our pointer moves to the right by one. And now the new pointer is going to be over here. Now we're comparing three and four. So in this case, three is smaller, right? So we end up choosing three. So two points to three. And in that case, we accounted for the three. So we just cross it out and we move the pointer to the right by one. Okay, so I don't have space. So I'm just going to continue it over here. Okay, so now we're choosing between seven and four. And in this case, L1 is greater than L2. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to choose L2. So now we end up taking four. We accounted for it. So cross it out move the pointer to the right by one, and three is now going to point to four. Perfect, so finally we have seven and five, and now the question is, well, what do we actually end up choosing? So we end up choosing five, right, since seven is greater than five, so we're done with this, and four points to five, but now what happens, okay? So in every linked list, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, in this case, what would actually happen is the five would be pointing to none, and similarly, seven would also be pointing to none. Now, the none over here just represents that we've reached the ending of our linked list. So we know that. So now in this case, what happens is that our pointer moves to the right. So we were before we were over here at five. Now we move to the right and now our pointer is at none. OK, so since our pointer is now at none, that means that we are done with one of the linked lists. So in this case, to be more precise, this linked list has been completely done. We have used everything inside of that linked list. Now, in this case, what exactly do we do? So let's say we continue to do this. Uh, what would end up happening is we would be comparing seven with none. And that is not possible. You cannot compare a none type with a integer value. So in this case, what exactly do we end up doing? So in this case, this means that we're done with one of the linked lists. So to be more precise, in this case, we are done with linked list too. We don't need to worry about it. We only took care of all of its elements. Now, the only linked list that we really need to worry about is linked list one because we still have its elements in it. So now what we're actually going to end up doing, we're going to go out of the loop that we were iterating through and we're just going to add everything remaining in whatever linked list is not at none. So in this case, we are exhausted L2. We used all of its values. So now we're going to add this value of L1. So we're going to add. So five over here is now going to point to seven. And it's also going to point to everything else in L1. So it's going to be seven and the seven points to none. And just to kind of, uh, you know, further illustrate the point, let's say seven points to eight, points to nine, points to 10, and that points to none, that all of that is going to be part of this. So seven points to eight, points to nine, points to 10, points to none. So you get the point, right? So that is the basic idea. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, so I think it's pretty simple to understand. And now let's just see how we can code it out. And it should be pretty simple to do so. Okay, so let's start off by actually creating our dummy head and our pointer. Actually, one more thing. So I forgot to mention why we needed the dummy head. So now in this case, we now want to end up returning our answer. So how exactly do we return an answer? So we want to return the head value. So in this case, let's say we want to return dummy, okay? So if you return dummy, that it's actually not correct because dummy is not part of our linked list. So this is where dummy comes into play. It's just there as a placeholder. So this was originally here and it always had the value. So what we're going to do now is we're going to return dummy dot next. So whatever is the next value of our dummy head over here is going to be the actual head of our linked list. So in this case, what we're saying is we're just basically getting rid of this and we're now going to return whatever is the next of the dummy. So that means we're returning this one and that means the one over here is the head node. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just uh, code it out, code our answer out. So let's start off by having a current pointer 
And the current pointer is basically the pointer that iterates over the new linked list that we have. And it starts off at the dummy head. So the current pointer is going to be equal to our dummy head. And uh, what are they going to be equal to? So we're going to initiate them as an object of the list node class. So the list node class is already defined for us over here. So let's just make an instance of it. So if you want to give it a value, you could just give it a value of none. But by uh, by itself as it is, it has a value of zero. So we don't even really so we don't really need to worry about it. Okay, so now that we have this, we're gonna go inside of our loop. Now the loop is basically doing the part which moves, uh, so which chooses a value between L1 and L2. And once it chooses a value between L1 and L2, it chooses the smallest one and current dot next ends up pointing to that. So that's what we're basically doing. And we're gonna keep going inside of this while loop as long as L1 and L2 have a value because once one of them is done, then in that case we stop and attach everything else to our current linked list, okay? So let's just go through that real quickly. So in this case, we're first gonna check if l1.val, and if you don't know where this is coming from, it's coming from the class defined over here. So if l1.val is greater than l2.val, then in that case, what exactly do we end up doing? So in this case, since l1 is greater than l2, that means l2 is a smaller value, and we're going to end up choosing l2. So what we're gonna do is current.next, is going to be equal to L2. Okay, perfect, so we have that. And now one more thing we have to do is we wanna move the L2 pointer itself. So L2 is equal to L2.next. Okay, and another thing that we actually wanna be doing is our current pointer also moves. So current is now going to be equal to current.next. All right, perfect, so that's not the case over here. So else, uh, then that means our L1 and L2 could be equal to the same thing or L2 could be greater than L1. So in that case, what's gonna happen is current.next is going to now equal to L1, and we wanna move the pointer in L1, so L1 is equal to L1.next, perfect. And another thing that's gonna happen is our current is also gonna move. So since that current is moving in both, the, in both of these statements, let's just take it out of here, and let's just put it outside of the if and else statements. So let's put it over here, okay? So each time our current pointer moves to the right by one. Okay, perfect. So that should be it for our while loop, I think. Yeah, so that should be it. And when we exit our while loop over here, uh, so we're only going to be exiting our while loop over here when we exhaust all of the values inside one of the linked lists. And um, that, or maybe both of the linked lists as well. So to actually check that, we want to have a if condition. So if not L1, so that means that we've used everything in L1. So that means L2 has the remaining values. So in that case, we're gonna do current.next is equal to L2. But if this is not the case, that means that we have reached the end of L2 and L1 is still left. So in that case, we're gonna do current.next and that is going to be equal to L1. Okay, so that's what we actually end up with. And finally, we want to be returning a value. And like I showed you earlier, we're going to be returning dummy.next. Okay, so that should be it for our solution and let's submit it. As you can see, our submission was accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.